Welcome to this overview on the research process in the health sciences. What is research? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, research is studious inquiry or examination, especially investigation or experimentation aimed at the discovery and interpretation of facts, revision of accepted theories or laws in the light of new facts, or practical applications of such new or revised theories or laws. It is also the systematic search for knowledge through method of study, observation, comparison, and experiment, an answer to the question, a solution to the problem, and the art of scientific investigation. Or, as Albert Einstein is quoted, if we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? John W. Cresswell, well known for his work in mixed method research, states that research is a process of steps used to collect and analyze information to increase our understanding of a topic or issue. Research can be seen as a series of multiple interlinked scientific activities moving from a single, from a beginning to an end. Research usually begins with the identification of a problem or question, followed by formulation of research questions and the determination of how best to answer these questions. Next to be decided is what data to collect, how it will be collected, and how it will be analyzed in order to answer the research question. The process ends with the reporting of the research findings. However, keep in mind that research investigation is often an iterative process, whereby the process of conducting the research will give rise to new ideas which, in turn, feed back into the data collection and analysis stage. Generally, a researcher conducts research work within seven steps, though there are research processes that have only five steps or as many as 10 steps. Based on the type of question asked or the type of science being applied, the researcher may alter or remove one or several of the steps. Here are the seven steps of the scientific method. Defining the problem, reviewing the literature, formulating a hypothesis, choosing a research design, collecting data, analyzing the data, then finally, interpretation and report writing. In any research journey, there are many important decisions to make. The first being actually deciding to do the research on an interesting question or problem. This may involve talking to colleagues, potential collaborators, attending presentations to get a feel for what research is being conducted in the area of the potential research question. It also helps if the question can meet the finer criteria. Finer stands for feasible. Writing a feasible research question means that it can be answered under objective aspects like time, scope, resources, expertise, or funding. Good questions must be amenable to the formulation of clear hypotheses. Some questions to ask regarding feasibility are, is there enough time to conduct this research? Is there the technology and expertise needed to undertake the study? Is there available funding for it? Is the study going to have the amount of effect and relevance to the expected audience? Is there access to the group of interest or number of participants needed to obtain accurate results? Interesting. The question or topic should be of interest to the researcher and the outside world. It should have a clinical and or educational significance, the so what factor. The interesting factor is highly dependent on intrinsic individual drive for a specific topic. Even if the topic turns out to be quite uninteresting for some people, it doesn't mean it's not exciting at all. It is advisable to verify the interest of a question with mentors and outside specialists prior to dedicating significant energy to creating a research plan or grant proposal that peers and funding agencies might find boring. Novel. In scientific literature, novelty defines itself by being an answer to an existing gap in knowledge. Filling one of these gaps is highly rewarding for any researcher as it may represent a real difference in people's lives. Good research leads to new information. An investigation which simply reiterates what is previously proven is not worth the effort and cost. A question doesn't have to be completely original. It may ask whether an earlier observation could be replicated, whether the results in one population also apply to others, or whether enhanced measurement methods can make clear the relationship between two variables. Ethical. In empirical research, ethics is an absolute must. Make sure that safety and confidentiality measures are addressed and according to the necessary IRB protocols. Relevant. 
Any idea that is considered relevant in the healthcare community has better chances to be discussed upon by a large number of researchers and recognized experts, leading to innovation and rapid information dissemination. The results could potentially be important and may change current ideas and or practice. Formulating the research question with clearly identified variables to study creates the guide for the rest of the research process. The research question drives the study design, thus determining the choice of the methodology and data collection. By formulating an answerable question, it allows the researcher to focus their efforts specifically on what matters. These questions are usually triggered by patient encounters, which generate questions about the diagnosis, therapy, prognosis, or etiology. The process of formulating a good research question is known in evidence-based healthcare as a well-built clinical question. One way of building the research question starts with the patient and is known as PICO. A well-built clinical question includes the following components. The patient or population's disorder or disease or problem of interest. Who or what is the question about? This may include the primary problem, disease, or circumstances. Sometimes the sex, age, or race of a patient might be relevant to the diagnosis or treatment of a disease. Intervention or finding under review. What main intervention or treatment are under consideration? What factor may influence the prognosis of the patient, such as age or comorbidities? What was the patient exposed to? A comparison intervention or control, not always present. What alternative intervention is considered, if any? For example, the question might be comparing the efficacy of two medications or the accuracy of two diagnostic tests. The clinical question does not have to always have a specific comparison. The outcome. What will the study try to accomplish or measure? What is the researcher trying to do for the patient or problem? Examples might include managing a disease, alleviating symptoms, preventing a disease, etc. Time frame, which can be optional. What's the amount of time that the researcher will be observing the patient or problem? For example, improving rates of hospital acquired infections over the course of a year. There is no one correct way to construct a PICO question. The clinical question should include elements specific to each patient or population's unique circumstances and values. The acronym PICO assists in remembering the steps. P for patient, population, or problem. I, intervention, the cause, diagnostic test, treatment. C, comparison intervention. O for outcomes. And T for time frame. Formulation of a hypothesis in research is an essential task in the research process. A hypothesis is a tentative solution to a research problem or question, or more essentially, a statement about the relationship between two or more variables that the researcher will set out to prove or disprove. Effective research work formulates the hypothesis in such a way that collected factual data will provide evidence that either supports or disproves them. The process begins with asking the question, what would happen if, or does this always happen when? After identifying and defining the research question, the next step is to review the existing literature that is closely related to the topic under investigation. This step provides foundational knowledge about the problem area. The review of the literature also educates the researcher about what studies have been conducted in the past, how these studies were conducted, and the conclusions in the problem area. The researcher then can take into account how useful is the previous research that exists. Did previous researchers investigate the same problem? How do they resolve it? What aspects of the problem have remained unsolved? A literature review also helps find measurement instruments and identify researchers or potential collaborators with similar interests. Finding and gathering relevant research literature involves identifying search terms which will be found in the carefully constructed research question. Selecting resources in which to perform the search, such as PubMed and Cochrane Library, the formulating of an effective search strategy using a combination of mesh terms, keywords, and appropriate limitations or filters of the results. A well-planned search that involves a librarian in the literature search process will greatly enhance the likelihood of relevant search results. This tree diagram lays out the four basic study design groups in healthcare and their relationships. They are basic studies, the animal and lab studies, observational studies, which include both descriptive and analytic designs, experimental studies into which randomized control trials fall, and finally, meta-analysis and systematic reviews. 
The research design that is chosen depends on the type of hypothesis or question asked, such as, does X cause Y, or how can I describe X and Y, or what is the relationship between X and Y? Also, how much time and money the study will cost, and whether or not it is possible to find participants. The researcher has to consider each of these points when choosing the study design. Research design decides how the research materials will be collected. While there are many kinds of research, most human research fall into two categories, observational and experimental. Observational research refers to the study of non-experimental situations. This research is classified as non-experimental because the variables are neither controlled nor manipulated. The results are both qualitative and quantitative in nature. Observational studies are further broken down into descriptive studies or analytic studies. Experimental research, also known as interventional studies, are conducted using two sets of variables, where one variable is the control and the other is manipulated in some way so that the differences between relationships between the variables are measured, calculated, and compared. Experimental research takes place under a controlled environment. One or more research methods, for example, clinical trial, survey, interview, etc., are chosen depending on the research objectives. In some research contexts, a survey may be suitable. In others, interviews or case studies or observation might be more appropriate. So research design can be defined as a framework of research methods and techniques applied by a researcher to incorporate different elements and components of research in a systematic manner. Most significantly, research design provides insight into how to conduct research using a particular research methodology. Research methods mean techniques, strategies, processes utilized in data collection or finding evidence for analysis in order to explore new information or create a better understanding of a particular research topic. There are basically two research methods, qualitative research methods and quantitative research methods. Quantitative methods intend to measure facts in mathematical and statistical models. Qualitative methods try to gather Detailed, rich data allowing for an in-depth understanding of research phenomena seeks the why rather than the how. Many research studies make use of mixed methods approach. A mixed methods approach uses both qualitative and quantitative research methods in order to gain a more comprehensive understanding and explanation of the research problem being studied. A rule of thumb for deciding whether to use qualitative or quantitative research design is use quantitative research to confirm or test something, such as a theory or hypothesis. Use qualitative research to understand something such as concepts, thoughts, behaviors, or experiences. After the research method is decided, the researcher then collects data using a methodical process of gathering and analyzing specific information that is relevant to the research question. When data is collected, the researcher needs to know the effective techniques of data collection in order to gather necessary information with regard to the research question. A key reason for collecting data is to ensure that the integrity of the research question is maintained. In order to prove the need for change in the norm or the introduction of new information that will be widely accepted, it is important to collect data as evidence to support these claims. Additionally, to minimize the risk of errors in decision making and reduce the likelihood of errors consistent with the results, it is vital that accurate data is collected. Data collection saves time and money that would otherwise be misspent without a deeper understanding of the topic or subject matter. Primary data collection, by definition, is the gathering of original raw data collected at the source by a researcher for a specific research purpose. Since different kinds of data is required for different scenarios, there are a number of different ways in which primary data can be collected. Some techniques for collating primary data include questionnaires, experiments, and surveys. Secondary data refers to data that was originally collected by governmental agencies, organizations, or data that was collected for other research purposes and has been made available to other researchers. Secondary research includes data published in research reports, health records, data repositories, and similar resources. Data collection methods can be broken down into two types, qualitative research and quantitative data collection methods. Based on the data to be collected, the researcher will need to decide which method is best suited to answer the research question. 
Experimental research is primarily a quantitative method in which the researcher manipulates one or more variables and controls and measures any change in other variables. Interviews or focus groups can be either quantitative or qualitative methods. Interviews allow for both closed and open-ended questions. A focus group is a data collection method that uses a combination of interviewing, surveying, and observing several individuals who have something in common. Observation involves collecting information without asking questions. In general, observation can determine the dynamics of a situation, which generally cannot be measured through other data collection techniques. Document and records-based research uses existing data for a study. While using documents and records can be efficient and inexpensive, they can be an incomplete or biased data source. Questionnaires and surveys can be used to ask questions that have either closed or open-ended answers, but need to be carefully designed in order to collect meaningful data. Quantitative data is anything that can be measured, comprising specific quantities and numbers. Quantitative data is usually seen as more objective and reliable than qualitative. Quantitative data collection methods are structured, instrument or test-based, usually involve large sample sizes and employ strong scientific controls. There are many quantitative data collection methods, but the ones mentioned here are the most commonly used approaches. They include quantitative surveys, which pose closed questions with the answer options provided. The standardized nature of the questionnaires enables researchers to make generalizations out of the results, but can be very limiting to the respondents, since it is possible that the actual answer to the question may not be in the list of options provided on the questionnaire. Interviews that are structured by being comprised of a prepared set of standard questions. Quantitative interviews usually contain close-ended questions that are delivered in the same format and same order to every respondent. Quantitative interview data are analyzed by assigning a numerical value to participants' responses. Quantitative observation views research variables in terms of quantity. It is usually associated with values that can be counted, such as age, weight, volume, and scale. Surveys, questionnaires, and polls are common methods of carrying out quantitative observation. Experiments manipulate independent variables and measure the effects on a dependent variable. Experimental methods use quantitative outcome variables, which are then statistically tested and often include some measure of experimental effect. Examples of an experiment include the randomized control trial, quasi-experimental design, or correlational study. Data obtained using qualitative data collection methods can be used to find new ideas, opportunities, and problems, test their value and accuracy, formulate predictions, explore a certain area in more detail, and explain the numbers obtained using quantitative data collection techniques. Since qualitative data collection methods usually do not involve numbers and mathematical calculations, qualitative data is often seen as more subjective, but at the same time, it allows a greater depth of understanding. Qualitative data collection methods are semi-structured or unstructured, usually involve small sample sizes and lack strong scientific controls. Qualitative data collection methods employ many of the same methods as quantitative data collection, except that instead of structured or closed, they are semi or unstructured and open-ended. Some of the most common qualitative data collection techniques include open-ended surveys and questionnaires, interviews, focus groups, observation, case studies, and so on. There is generally five types of qualitative data collection. Ethnography research involves semi-structured or unstructured interviews with open-ended questions, participant and non-participation observation, collected materials including documents, books, papers, video, and audio. Phenonomical research, in-depth interviewing, which involves conducting intensive individual interviews with a small number of respondents to explore their perspectives on a particular idea, program, or situation. The participant interviews may be structured, semi-structured, or unstructured. It also includes reflective journals, written oral self-reports, and participants' aesthetic expressions. Grounded theory research. Data collection methods often include in-depth interviews using open-ended questions. 
Questions can be adjusted as theory emerges. Participant observation and focus groups may also be used as well as collecting and studying documents, books, papers, audio, images, artifacts, videos, etc. used by participants in their daily lives. Narrative research is where participant or non-participant interview, aesthetic expressions, one's own and others' observation, storytelling, letter writing, autobiographical writing, collected materials, personal information such as values. Narrative analysis focuses on different elements to make diverse but equally substantial and meaningful interpretations and conclusions. It is a genre of analytic frames used by researchers to interpret information with the context of research shared by all in daily life. Case study. Focus groups, semi-structured and unstructured interviews with open-ended questions, participant and non-participant observation, collected materials. The first stage of analyzing data is data preparation, where the aim is to convert raw data into something meaningful and readable. A data analysis plan maps out how the data will be cleaned, transformed, and analyzed. All scientific research is replicable, and to be replicable, the reader needs to be able be given the roadmap of how the researcher managed the data and conducted the analysis. It includes the following steps. Data validation is done to understand if the collected data sample is per the preset standards and without any bias. This includes checking for fraud, screening to make sure the participants were chosen as per the research criteria, was the data collection done following established procedure and the completeness of the data collected, are there any gaps or missing data. Data editing or cleaning. Research data can be loaded with errors. Data editing is a process where the researchers confirm that the provided data is free of such errors. Researchers need to conduct basic data and outletter checks to edit the raw data. Data coding refers to grouping and assigning values to responses from the study. It is easier to analyze small data buckets rather than to deal with a massive data pile. Data management is an essential area of responsible research, so be sure to develop a data management system to store and organize the data. This system will help to improve the quality of data entry and management. If it isn't already available, create a data management plan that will describe the data that will be acquired or produced during research, how the data will be managed, described, and stored, what standards will be used, and how the data will be handled and protected during and after the completion of a project. Many federal funding agencies require data management plans. The university libraries can help with developing data management plans. Analysis and interpretation are the central steps in the research process. The goal of analysis is to summarize the collected data in such a way that they provide answers to the questions that triggered the research. Data analysis is the process of systematically applying statistical and or logical techniques to describe and illustrate, condense, and recap, and evaluate data. According to Shmu and Resnick, various analytic techniques provide a way of drawing inductive inferences from data and distinguishing any real phenomena or effects from random fluctuations. A responsible researcher will make every attempt to draw unbiased inferences from data. According to LeCamp and Schmel, research data analysis is a process used by researchers for reducing data to a story and interpreting it to derive insights. The data analysis process helps to make sense of the data by reducing large chunks of data into smaller fragments. Marshall and Rossman, on the other hand, describe data analysis as a messy, ambiguous, and time-consuming, but a creative and fascinating process through which a mass of collected data is being brought to order, structure, and meaning. When analyzing data, start with a review of the goals of the research. The reason why the research was done in the first place, this will help organize the data and focus the analysis. The first type of data analysis is descriptive analysis. It is the foundation of all data insight. It is the simplest and most common use of data. Descriptive analysis answers the what happened by summarizing historical data and answer questions such as, how many patients were hospitalized last week? What percent of patients dropped home therapy in the last month? What are the average bone mineral metabolism laboratory values for the patient population? Descriptive analysis helps to understand and describe the aspects of a specific set of data by, by providing, providing brief observations and summaries about the sample, which can then help identify patterns. 
The summaries typically involve quantitative data and visuals such as graphs and charts. The most common types of descriptive statistics are the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode, that are used in most levels of research, evidence-based practice, and quality improvement. After asking the main question of what happened, the next step is to dive deeper and ask why did it happen, and answer such questions as, why did these patients go to the hospital last week? Why did the patients leave home therapy? Why do patients not meet BMM targets? Diagnostic analysis takes the insights found from descriptive analytics and drills down to find the causes of these outcomes. As in descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics involves an investigation of historical data. Predictive analysis attempts to answer the question, what is likely to happen? This type of analytics utilizes previous data to make predictions about future outcomes and answer such questions as, which patients will have the highest risk of hospitalization next week? Which patients are likely to switch from home therapy to in-center next month? Next month's BMM values for each patient. This type of analysis is another step up from a descriptive and diagnostic analyses. Predictive analysis uses data modeling to make logical predictions of the outcomes of events. It takes advantage of thousands of data elements and identifies patterns. This allows clinicians and healthcare administrative staff to receive alerts about potential events. It is also important to understand that forecasting is only an estimate. The accuracy of predictions relies on quality and detailed data. Prescriptive analysis combines the insight from all previous analyses to determine the course of action or actions that are needed to find a solution to a current problem or decision. It uses modeling, data mining, and artificial intelligence to evaluate historical data and real-time data to make future predictions. It gives multiple what-if options which can be compared to find the best possible outcome for the patient. It can put healthcare data in context to evaluate the cost-effectiveness of various procedures and treatments and to evaluate official clinical methods. It can also be used to analyze which hospital patients have the highest risk of readmission so that healthcare providers can do more via patient education and doctor follow-up to stave off constant returns to the hospital emergency room. Each of these types of data analysis are connected and rely on each other to a certain degree. They each serve to a different purpose and provide varying insights. Quantitative data analysis methods are generally classified into two groups. Descriptive statistics, used to describe data, and inferential statistics, which helps in comparing the data. The difference between descriptive and inferential statistics is in the process as much as it does the statistics that are reported. Inferential statistics are used to make inferences from the data to more general conditions, while descriptive statistics are used to simply describe what's going on in the data. Descriptive statistics are the methods used to describe the basic features of the data in research. It presents the data in such a way that any pattern in the data starts to make sense. For descriptive statistics, a group is chosen that a researcher wants to describe and then measure all the subjects in that group. The statistical summary describes this group with the complete certainty outside of measurement error. A few major types of descriptive analysis methods include measures of frequency. It is used to denote how often a particular event occurs. Researchers use it when they want to show how often a response is given. Measures of central tendency. This method is used to demonstrate distribution by various points. Researchers will use this method when they want to show the most commonly or averagely indicated response. Measures of dispersion or variation. This method is used to identify spread of results by stating intervals. Researchers use this method to show how data is spread out. Measures of position. It is often used when researchers want to compare results with the average count. Inferential statistics are used to make predictions on the probability that an observed difference between groups is a dependable one or one that might have happened by chance in the study. Inferential statistics, the population first needs to be defined and then a sampling plan is created that produces a representative sample. The statistical results incorporate the uncertainty that is inherent in using a sample to understand an entire population. The sample size becomes a vital statistic. Some of the commonly used methods include correlation. When researchers are not conducting experimental research, but are interested in understanding the relationship between two or more variables, they opt for correlational research methods. 
cross-tabulation, also called contingency tables. Cross-tabulation is used to analyze the relationship between multiple variables. Regression analysis. For understanding the strong relationship between two variables, researchers commonly use the regression analysis method, which is also a type of predictive analysis. In this method, there is a dependent variable and multiple independent variables. The researcher tries to find out the impact of the independent variables on a dependent variable. Analysis of variance. This statistical procedure is used for testing the degree to which two or more vary or differ in an experiment. A considerable degree of variation means research findings are significant. It is critical to develop a systematic approach for analyzing qualitative data. There are four major steps to this process. Reviewing the data. Before any analysis, it is important that the researcher understands the data collected by reviewing them several times. For example, if the data consists of interview transcripts, the researcher should read and reread the transcripts until they have a general understanding of the content. While reviewing, the researcher should write notes about first impressions of the data. These initial responses may be useful later for data interpretation. Organizing the data. Qualitative data sets tend to be very lengthy and complex. Once the data has been reviewed and the researcher is familiar with it, it then needs to be organized so that the data are more manageable and easy to navigate. This can save time and energy later. Depending on the questions to be answered, there are a variety of ways to group the data, including by date, by data collection type, such as focus groups versus interviews, or by question asked. Coding the data. Coding is the process of identifying and labeling themes within the data that correspond with the questions to be answered. Themes are common trends or ideas that appear repeatedly throughout the data. The researcher may have to read through the data several times before all the potential themes are identified. There are several techniques to analyze the data in qualitative research. Here are some commonly used methods. Content analysis. It is the most frequently employed technique for qualitative data analysis. It can be used to analyze the documented information from text, images, and sometimes from physical items. Narrative analysis used to analyze content gathered from various sources such as personal interviews, field observation, and surveys. Discourse analysis. Similar to narrative analysis, discourse analysis is used to analyze the interactions with people. This method considers the social context under which or within which the, com the communication between the researcher and the respondent takes place. Grounded theory. Grounded theory involves a collection and analysis of data. The theory is grounded in actual data, which means the analysis and development of theories happens after the data has been collected. As researchers review the data collected, ideas or concepts become apparent. The researchers tag those ideas or concepts with codes that summarize the ideas or concepts. As more data is collected and re-reviewed, codes can be grouped into higher level concepts and then into categories. These categories may then become the basis of a hypothesis or new theory. Review and interpret the data. The interpretation of results reviews to the ex explanation of the statistical results from the research with the intention of establishing some new explanatory concepts and at the same time linking these results with some other previous findings or studies. It assigns meaning to research findings and makes it open to implementation. Interpretation is important because it brings out the significance, usefulness, and utility of research findings and makes it open to practical application. Review the findings to identify patterns in the data. Work out the implication, implications of the data gathered. Review each theme that arose during the coding process. Consider similarities and differences between responses from participants with different characteristics. Ascertain whether or there are any extreme data that falls significantly above or below the mean, medium, or mode. Determine to what extent was the research question answered. The final step of the research process is to report the research findings, converting them into a written report that makes sense to the reader. The research report outlines the processes, data, and findings of the research. It serves as a first-hand account of the research process and can be considered as a summary of the research process that clearly highlights findings, recommendations, and discusses questions that remain unanswered and suggest further research in the future. When writing up the research results, Consider using reporting guidelines, such as those found at the Equator Network, which provide a structured way of reporting the results of a wide variety of studies. 
Our reporting guideline provides a clear list of reporting items that should appear in a manuscript so that it can be understood by the reader, replicated by researchers, or used by healthcare providers to make clinical decisions. The Equator Network website also contains a toolkit with resources to help with writing research. To learn more, here are some readings for further study. The Health Sciences Library maintains resources on finding health data, style manuals, and writing research, as well as the do's and don'ts of writing research. We also have services to help you with your research, whether it is researcher support, help with a literature search, or if you just need to meet with our librarian to talk, 